When you have an anxiety disorder, chances are high that you have agoraphobia. It's best described as an intense fear of places and settings that you perceive are impossible or difficult to escape from. In today's video, we are going to explore why agoraphobia is so prevalent and many of us suffering from anxiety, why we've developed this fear in the first place, and towards the end, you will learn a technique that I've used to overcome this fear. If you're watching this video, I can assume that you've had a panic attack at least once in your life, and know the intense fear and frightening symptoms that come along with them. Well, a panic attack is your body's reaction towards immense stress. It's also called a fight or flight response, which kicks in every time your mind believes that you're in danger. This reaction will heighten your senses and make you more aware of your surroundings. Back in the day, this state would keep you alive when going through a thick jungle, for example, that is known to be infested with tigers. Every little noise, movement and smell around you will be noticed and then automatically processed in your brain. Without even thinking about it, your body and mind will react on these. Today we normally never face situations like this, where we need this kind of reaction, but our body hasn't adapted to our new and safe life circumstances we now live in, and works just the way it always did. If you're someone who suffers from anxiety, your stress levels are constantly amped up, and if you think about it, now that you're in fight or flight mode, your brain's only concern is to get you out of danger. So you can imagine how uncomfortable it feels when you are stuck in an office, a bus or at a party where it simply isn't possible to just run away. But a way out is exactly what your mind is looking for. The result is basically a battle between your conscious mind and the more instinctive primal part of the brain. This battle itself creates stress, and so unfortunately it's the latter that often gets the better of us, and we end up in a full-blown panic attack. The real problem here is that the brain is programmed to learn and adapt to these frightening situations. So it's very likely that when you get into the same or very similar situation, you will dive right back into panic mode. And every time this happens, this fear is further embedded into your brain. Another reason why so many of us develop agoraphobia is that our worries keeps feeding to our stress. As we are always worrying, we do not get enough rest to recover. You could say that throughout the day, we are on the verge of a panic attack. When at home comfy on your couch, this might still be manageable. But the flashing lights, traffic noise or the crowds outside could be all it takes to get you to lose control and leap right into a panic attack. And for me personally, I've noticed that my anxiety disorder has taken away so much of my confidence and self-worth that I just plainly felt uncomfortable being around people. If it was just a random person looking at me when walking by, a handshake at work or a small talk with buddies, it all made me feel very uneasy and then all I wanted to do was go back home and back to peace. So I would say that a loss of confidence is definitely another reason why so many of us have the fear of public spaces and tend to panic in these kinds of settings. In order to recover from agoraphobia, it's important to keep your stress levels low throughout the day. So if you feel most comfortable at home, then you should be using it this time to work on the stress coping fundamentals like exercise, meditation and positive thinking. I always like to think of it as recharging my batteries in order to have more energy and a higher stress tolerance later on when I get myself to confront my fears. But the single most valuable exercise for me coping with agoraphobia would be mindfulness. Whenever I would go out, I would do everything possible to consciously soak in everything around me and try to fully grasp how fascinating and beautiful our surroundings can be. Fully attend to what's happening around you and what you are doing at this very moment. You will be astonished how many little things you suddenly notice that you were completely unaware of before. This exercise will not cure you overnight, but it's something that you can learn and I actually found it pretty easy to successfully implement into my life as it was one of the things that I found very enjoyable. Start slowly doing this exercise perhaps in the woods, a park or anywhere else that you don't find terrifying and step by step progress and work on getting your life back. 